Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to How to Unlock Your Best Voice. My name is Mike and I run this online program called Music Ministry 101, which has uh, just been an awesome ministry for me to be able to share some of my knowledge about music. And let's get started. It's going to be a wonderful night. Hopefully you have your cup with straw and it's little less than half full with water or half full is fine and we're going to be using that a little bit later and so let's begin here we go it's going to be a wonderful night all right so just a little bit about me uh so i'm mike and i am the director of music at saint patrick church in farmington connecticut and I'm actually in the church right now. I'm in the basement. As you can probably tell it doesn't really look like a church behind me uh, with the American flag over here. But I'm in the basement, and this is the upstairs right here on a full Sunday. And I have a wonderful wife, Maria, wonderful daughter, Clara. This is Maria's sister, by the way. And uh, Clara just celebrated her first birthday. So that was all very fun, but very different because it was on Zoom. We didn't have anyone come over. We just celebrated with our family on Zoom because of everything that's going on. Uh, so I just wanted to say um, a little story um, about me and why I'm doing this. Well, vocal technique is important to me, and it's because it's in the mass, and it's a critical part of the mass. Um, but first, I have a little note here for myself. Don't forget the giveaway, Mike. Yes, so I'm going to be giving away a prize at the end of this, and I have a way of doing that, which is put one number into the chat room, and that's a number between 1 and 100, and then I have a number written down here, and the closest person will be the recipient of the prize, okay? So right now in the chat room, put a number between 1 and 100, and later on in the evening, I will pick the person that was closest, um, and they'll be getting that $97 prize. All right, so let's keep going. So vocal technique is very important to me. All right, this is me here at the Berkshire Choral Festival in about 2010, the gray shirt. And so that's about 10 years ago, right? And the Berkshire Choral Festival, just imagine this, it's when 150 to 200 singers, mostly in their 50s, 60s, and even 70s, get together and they perform a major work. So I mean like the Brahms Requiem or the Vivaldi Gloria or Belshazzar's Feast by William Walton. And I went to the Berkshire Choral Festival as an apprentice. So my job was to actually sing in the choir and to help the bass section, all right? There was also another level above me, which was the staff conductors, and then there was more staff members above that. And so the reason I'm telling you this is because I was actually hired to be there, and I had a good voice, and I could sing pretty well, I thought. And after the first day of rehearsal, crazy thing happened. My voice started to go out, and I started to lose my voice. It was actually really embarrassing because I was there as a hired hand to be singing out, you know, and, and be a, a leader in the choir, these massive choirs of like 150 to 200 people. And so I started to lose my voice after rehearsing. And I was talking with the other apprentices here, okay, these folks, um, and they didn't have the same issue that I had. So the difference was I was trained as a pianist and I had a good voice so I thought that I should apply for this program. They were actually trained as vocalists, so they had vocal instruction, and that was a big difference. So what I did is I started to go to the workshops at the Berkshire Choral Festival, and I started to ask the people that were above my pay grade, so to speak, you know, how do you, how do, you do this, or why am I losing my voice, or what's going on here? And I started to learn vocal technique. And the rest is history. So I started Music Ministry 101, and I help singers in the Catholic Church just improve their voices and do better psalms and do better hymns and all of that stuff. So I started this YouTube channel called Music Ministry 101, and I took all of that voice technique that I learned, and I started sharing it with cantors and choir members and anyone who sings in the church or anyone who's interested in singing in the church. And it really, it really took off. See, this is a psalm from February 16th, 2020. And I did these psalms every single week. 
and I actually taught. I sang the psalm, and then I taught, and then I would give a practice edition. And so, you know, after so, so much time, you know, you start to get thousands of subscribers and people that are, are learning from you, and it's really humbling. So I committed myself to taking what I learned from the college level and basically putting it out for free at Music Ministry 101. And so here's my basic premise behind, behind this. Let's say that this sun, I know it's just, it's just a, a dumb sun, right? But let's say this sun is like, like me, okay? So I go to church and I'm the song leader, okay? Or I sing in the choir. Well, I'm there at church to praise God, which is this right here. And the way that I sing has an, infe- uh, an effect on all of the other people. So whether this be the congregation or the rest of the choir, they're also there to praise God, okay? So let's say that this is all of us together praising God, right? Well, the thing is, if I come with not the best version of my voice, let's say I come and I'm, I, I don't really know uh, some essential vocal techniques, well, I'm not going to be able to inspire the congregation or even the people around me to sing better to praise God. So let's say that I learned some vocal techniques, which I started to do in 2010. I can't believe that's 10 years ago. Well, you start to get a bigger presence, and your presence of praising God actually affects others, and they become more confident as well, the people around you. And so this is really a matter of leadership and vocal leadership, whether you're a cantor or whether you're in a choir. It's just essential that you have some basic vocal skills. We're going to do some awesome vocal skills tonight, so I'm super pumped. But this is the basic idea, though. We have a responsibility as leaders in the church, whether you're in the choir or you're a cantor, to you know be our best selves and to learn vocal techniques. All right, so best vocal presence, right? Best engagement, best prayer, best praise. They all go together. All right, so you can learn vocal technique, and we're going to do a lot tonight. So first step is to know how the voice works, all right? Now you think, this, oh, it's really simple, right? It's just like air, and then you got your uh, Adam's apple. But there's a couple of distinctions that I want to make uh, to help you with that aspect of knowing how the voice works. The next part is to learn essential vocal techniques. And then the third part is you get a better voice from learning those vocal techniques. So they all work hand in hand. Now, to, to prove this to you, I'm going to just take a quick peek. All right. So right here, my tummy, right? Some singers think that when you have to have more air support, you should use diaphragmatic breathing and you should push and tighten your tummy right here. That's not true. <laughs> That's not true. And we're going to go over that more tonight. But knowing how the mechanism works is essential I'm going to show you this tonight um, to understanding the voice and to getting a better voice, okay? All right, so let's keep going. These are the elements of the voice and how, how you sound as a singer. These are the elements. All right, so you have the voiced sound, right? Where the sound is coming from is your vocal cords, okay, which is inside your larynx right here at the Adam's apple area right behind there, the vocal cords, then you have the resonance and the resonance is huge a huge factor here so you have a little sound coming from here but that sound is resonating right it's resonating like depending on the size room you're in you have different resonance that's why people like singing in the shower by the way because the resonance is awesome and so you can increase your resonance by learning how to access the soft palate which we'll go over tonight by learning how to place the sound, all right, in your body, and by relaxing the tension and opening everything up, you can increase your resonance. Now, resonance also includes some of your sinuses, your sinus cavities. Those also, as empty spaces, those can resonate as well. And the next section, articulation. This one should be pretty obvious, but your teeth, or sorry, your tongue, your lips, Everything that moves to make the sounds and to shape those vowels, that will go under articulation. And then the final area is a, is a negative. It's something we want to subtract all the time as singers, and that is minimizing tension, right? Minimizing tension. So 
back in the Berkshire Coral Festival, when I first got there, 2010, uh, I had tension here and my voice started to go out and it really was unfortunate. And then I had tension here, right there, all right? Super, super unfortunate. So as singers, we always have to minimize tension. But funny enough, that comes from knowing how the voice works because we often can add tension in areas that we don't want. So we'll talk about tension more tonight. The main point here is that your sounds can be enhanced one element at a time, all right? All right, so let's keep going. How the voice works, all right? These are the basics, okay? So you have here, you have um, your diaphragm and your lungs. Now your diaphragm is a dome-shaped muscle, and you can take your hands, make a dome, and put them right about here. Okay, now to get air in to your lungs, your diaphragm contracts. So your diaphragm tightens up a little bit and it goes like this. That's when you breathe in, okay? So the diaphragm is active when you breathe in. Your lungs don't, your lungs are just, just those uh, like bags, right? But the diaphragm is active when you breathe in. Now when you breathe out, your diaphragm just relaxes slowly and the air comes out. There's other muscles that push out. So it's not your diaphragm that's pushing out, and you shouldn't feel that, that tension there uh, around your diaphragm, but there's other muscles that we're gonna access tonight, all right? Your diaphragm's job is to pull air into the lungs and then relax as the air leaves the lungs. The diaphragm does not push air out, okay? There are other muscle groups that do that. So you're gonna love my setup right here, I think, I hope. So I'm gonna go to this view, boom, like that. And I'm gonna appear in the, just a moment. <clears throat> All right, so you should be able to see me and, and hear me okay. Um, the desk I was just at is right there. This is, this is kind of a cool setup, a new thing. So again, your diaphragm is here like a dome and it contracts downward to take air in. So let's start with posture, okay? Because we just want to get the, the basics down and then we're going to talk about a little bit more about breathing, all right? So posture 101. The first thing is vertically, you want to have certain things aligned, all right? Your feet actually have three points of contact. It's the ball, the outer edge, and the heel. So right now, could everyone stand up where you are? And I can't see you, so I'm just trusting that you're doing this. So stand up where you are and find balance on those three points of your feet. All right, just your feet. Now, your knees should be slightly bent, not super bent, but slightly bent, so that they're not locked up and your knees are going directly over your feet, okay? All right, then your hips right here on your sides, your hip bone, all right? You want those to be directly over your knees, which are directly over your feet. So we're getting vertical alignment here, all right? Vertical alignment. Now, next up the chain, shoulders. Let's bring our shoulders up and just roll them back slightly. All right, so nice and relaxed, shake it out. Your shoulders should be over your hips, which are over your knees and over your feet. So we have some vertical alignment. Now, it should feel relaxed because you should be resting on your skeletal structure. Now, if I, if I stand nice and relaxed, but up straight, up tall, and I lean forward, now I'm using muscles, I'm engaging muscles, and I have tension in my body. If I lean backward, I'm engaging different muscles, and I feel tension too. So when you're standing straight up, you want to feel very relaxed because the body and the skeletal structure is working the way that it should. Now let's talk about the head for a second. I think the average human head weighs about like eight pounds or something like that. Maybe there's a doctor in the chat room that could correct me, but I think it's around eight pounds. So your head should just rest and also feel balanced on your shoulders, okay? So move your head around a little bit and find that place where it feels almost weightless. All right, should feel very relaxed, very comfortable. All right, another way to do this, by the way, 
A second way to do this, so what we just did is some Alexander technique and we worked our way from the bottom to the top. Another way to do this is to simply stand up straight, have your feet be slightly, or sorry, have your knees be unlocked, and then lean a little bit forward, lean a little bit backwards, and then do smaller movements until you find your center, all right, where everything is nice and relaxed, nice and tall. You can do the same thing going left and right if you have any concern about your left versus your right side. Go left and right and then make smaller movements until you find the center. So right there should be nice and relaxed, okay? All right, so that's some posture 101 for you. Now, let's keep moving. So we're gonna talk about breathing now, all right? So I told you that the diaphragm contracts to bring air in. Now, when air is going out, the diaphragm is relaxing. So the question is, what muscles are actually engaging in, um, in moving the air out? And we want, we want to be able to do that uh, at times, you know, nice and evenly, have a nice even tone when we're singing. So to find those muscles, what I'm going to do is recommend that we take a seat, by the way, because if you start to feel lightheaded, you don't want to be standing. So grab a seat. All right, so I'm sitting just nice, nice and tall, nice and relaxed, and I'm going to do an F sound, a nice loud F. I'll do five of them. All right, let's do that together. Ready and go. Let's do it again. Ready, set, go. Now, if you're doing that the right way, you should feel all kinds of muscles that are actually working, all right? Those are the muscles that allow you to have great air supports. All right, so we got to feel, again, those muscles a couple more times. Some of them are up here. Some of them are much lower, much, lo much, much lower. You can look this up if you, if you really want. So, again, do the F sound five times and feel which muscles are activating. Ready? And go. Same thing, ready, set, go. You should feel it actually pretty low in most cases, all right? Those are the muscles of air support. It's not the diaphragm pushing out. The diaphragm doesn't push out, right? The diaphragm just relaxes. It's those muscles that support the air and support the sound. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hiss out on an S sound and try to access some of those muscles that you found when you did. All right? I'll just do this for probably 10, 15 seconds, but I can do this for like a minute, like a crazy amount of time, a really long time, because I know about air support. All right? So we're going to breathe in a nice, relaxed breath. All right? By the way, when you breathe in, just think about opening the throat and breathing into an ah sound. It's like you're singing, ah, oh, but you're breathing in. Oh. Okay? And then we're going to hiss out. So breathe in and then hiss out. Ready? And go. Breathe in. Hiss out. Ideally, you want that hiss to be a nice, steady, and smooth sound. Because that hiss is the same air support that you need when you're singing, okay? The hiss is related to the singing. Let's try that a couple more times. So nice ah breath and then a hiss. Ready and go. Okay, I'll give you something else to think about and try. Now, if you take your hand together, all right, and you put it kind of on the lower side, you can push your hands together, much the way that like isometrics would be, where you push your, push your hands together. And I'm gonna do it down low because I wanna have the sensation that I'm using the muscles that are down low to have a nice steady stream of air. So let's do this one more time. Hopefully you're sitting. We'll go a little bit longer if you can. We'll breathe in, hiss out, but this time push your hands together nice and low. Or if you'd rather, 
just have a spinning hand, kind of down here. Just make your hand spin so that you feel that sensation of having the air be pushed out a little bit, okay? Here we go, breathe in. Good, okay. Let's go back into our former setup at the computer. Okay, I'm back at the computer. And, uh, whoop. <laughs> there we go, okay. <clears throat> I love technology. All right, so I hope, hopefully that was helpful. So we found our, our the muscles that are used to engage the air support, okay? That's crucial for finding that voice sound that comes from the vocal cords. All right, let's keep going. Okay, the larynx, I mentioned this before, but the larynx sits, or voice box, sits at the top of the trachea. All right, so here's an image. The larynx is right here. Go ahead and find your Adam's apple. Often, and obviously this is more pronounced, usually more pronounced for um, men, and usually less pronounced for women. Um, but inside the larynx is the vocal cords, and they look like this right here. All right, so we have two sets of vocal cords. Now, hopefully you can see my fingers on the screen as well. So when I'm just breathing, my vocal folds or vocal cords are open like this. There's nothing going on. But when we put the vocal cords together, that's when you get sound. Okay, so to demonstrate that a little bit, Take your fingers and try open, and then as you close your fingers, just sing, all right? That's what's going on in the larynx with your vocal cords. They're open when you're breathing, and they're closed for singing. Now, this, this gets... Uh, <laughs> This is an area of tension, okay? That's what I wanna say. This is an area of tension because if you, if you close really tightly or you're not using the proper breath support and you're relying too much on the vocal cords, okay? If your breath support is not great, you're gonna to start to feel it here in the vocal cords. They're working too hard. That's what this exercise is gonna be for in a few minutes. Another cool thing to know, note here and I'll teach you how to sing higher. Uh, cool thing to note is that the vocal cords are like rubber bands in a way, all right? So you have two together. Imagine just two rubber bands here, one's here and one's here. And when you're singing lower notes, they get more loose. <laughs> Great example. When you're singing higher, they stretch, okay? and they get tighter, all right? They're just like rubber bands. If you took a rubber band and stretched it and started plucking it, well, the pitch would get higher as you pull further, right? The pitch gets higher as you pull the rubber band tighter. The same way works for the vocal cords. Now, what happens with a lot of people trying to sing higher is they, tension, they make so much tension here that their vocal cords can no longer stretch any longer because there's too many tight muscles around <clears throat> and the vocal cords can't move anymore. On the other hand, if you want to sing higher, you have to reduce the tension and just simply allow your vocal cords to do what they're supposed to do, which is to, to lengthen, okay? So we as untrained singers, we tend to have a lot of tension here, and then it affects our vocal cords because they can no longer lengthen to sing higher. So if you're struggling singing higher, that could be what's going on. So you gotta master your breath support, and then you have to learn to reduce the tension all around here and allow yourself to be able to sing higher. I know, kind of tricky, right? It's one step at a time though. It's like breath support and then reducing tension <laughs> and then resonance as well. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. And we're gonna do a little bit of resonance work, okay, tonight. All right, so resonance. 
The chest, throat, oral cavity, nasal passage, and sinuses are used to change the resonating sound. All right, so the sound is coming from here, from the vocal cords, right? That's where the sound's coming from. And it resonates all around, even into your chest, it resonates all around. So by changing some of the resonators, um, you can change the sound of your voice. Big secret there. All right, I'm gonna point out one right here and I'll teach you about this. The soft palate, okay? I wonder if some of your directors or maybe you know about the soft palate already. Um, if not, now, now you'll know. So at the top of your mouth, all right, top of your mouth, you have the hard palate right here. It's very hard section. You can feel it with your tongue. Take your tongue and put it on the roof of your mouth. It's pretty, it's pretty hard, right? It's all pretty hard. But at the back of your throat, it gets soft and it becomes the soft palate. So I'd like you to find this right now. What you're going to do is look down here at the screen. You're going to take your tongue and put it right behind your top teeth. Right there. Now we're going to slide our tongue back along the roof of our mouth and it's going to be hard, 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 hard until you get to the very back and you're going to feel it gets soft. Okay, let's do that right now. So tongue sliding along the top of the mouth. It should go from hard to soft. Ready, set, go. Right at the very back, it gets soft. Now that's actually the soft palate, which is what we're talking about here. Cool thing is, is the soft palate moves up and down and it makes a huge difference in how you sound when you're speaking, how you sound when you're singing. So when that soft palate goes up to close off the nasal cavity, all right, it can actually go up there, go up a little bit, it creates a big open space here and you get more resonance in your voice. Hard palate doesn't move, it stays still, right? It's connected right here, it's connected all over the place, but the soft palate actually moves up and down. All right, now, cool thing, we're gonna access the soft palate now, so you know it's, it's like in between my fingers, right? In the back of your mouth, the roof of your mouth, and the very back. How do you raise that soft palate? Well, the best way, I think, is to breathe in through a yawn sensation. As you yawn, the body naturally lifts the soft palate, all right? So what we're gonna do, I think I said breathe in through a yawn, but I actually meant to, to try singing through the sense of yawning, all right? So what we're gonna do is go, oh, like that. And try to feel the back of your mouth open up very big. Oh, like that. Oh. If you yawn, I totally understand. This is probably going to bring out some yawns in you because you're accessing the same physical gesture, right, as the yawn. Yeah, it's a, an opening, right? So let's try that a few times. We'll just do an ah and try to open up to a yawn. Ready and go. Oh. Let's do it one more time. Ready, set, go. So hopefully that soft palate in the back is opening up. By the way, if you want to check this, little little gross, I'm not going to do it right here with, with this camera, but you can check this in a mirror with maybe a flashlight to see if your soft palate, you can see it in the back, is going up or not. And then you start to get a sense of what it feels like when the soft palate is going up. All right, another way to do it is imagine there's a hot potato. <laughs> this one always makes a couple people laugh, but imagine there's a hot potato in the back of your mouth. <gasps> like that. <gasps> okay, and the soft palate raises. It raises up and you have more resonance. Now, did you notice that when I do that, my voice changes sound? <laughs> Excuse me. So when I actually do that, it literally changes the sound of my voice because it changes the resonance. Now, I'm gonna to try to demonstrate for you just the drastic change that can happen when you learn about raising your soft palate, which we've been talking about. So it's hard for me sometimes to, to go back on the training um, that I've been given, but I will try. So I'm gonna to try to do a soft palate lower and just saying, ha, 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 ha. Now, Raise the soft palate. 
Ah. Ah. Raise the stop out. There's a lot more ring to the sound. There's more resonance, and it sounds better. By the way, that will fill a room much better because there's a lot more. Uh, um, there's more overtones, I think, in the sound. To talk about it, um, the math version is some more overtones. I think it's not as flat. You know, another way you can access that is just take your hand, put it right here, and imagine raising, raising up back there. Okay, so with your hand and you start to feel what it feels like back there, go and raise the soft palate, raise, raise, raise. All right, so there's other ways to do it. Those are some of the main ones for raising your soft palate. Now let's try an exercise. We'll try it right here. I'm sitting down at the, the laptop screen, but let's try an exercise. So we're gonna sing normally, and then we're gonna try raising the soft palate and singing the same thing. So let's just do a five note scale. Ah. Uh, like that. So first of all, flat. Ready and go. Uh, now sing through that yawn and raise the soft palate. Ready and go. Yaw. Let's do it one more time. I know some of you are working on to figure out Oh wow, that did make a difference. What what actually happened there when I did that? I noticed something sounded different. So listen to the sound as you're doing it too. Let's go normal or or flat. I'll just call it flat for now. Ready and go. Ah. Now raise. Ah. All right. Did you notice that we actually separated these different areas of the voice? We did posture was one area. We talked about breath support was another area. Now we're talking about resonance, another area. So we're separating the elements of the voice and you can work on these separately. And then when you go to sing for church or for mass or wherever you sing, you're gonna have all of these levels will go up, right? There's probably four or five, five levels and they're all gonna work their way up. It's okay to just work on resonance and just work on the soft palate. Maybe your, maybe your breath support isn't quite as good when you're super focused on your resonance, but it's okay to zoom in on one. I love zooming in on one thing, trying to master that and then zooming out and then singing a song, right? And seeing if you can apply it while you're doing a song as well. So just, just thinking about practice in that way, isolation, right? All right, let's keep going. Ba-boom. Okay, great. I'm super pumped for this. Boom, right there. Take a little sip. All right, so I hope um, there's almost 40 people here, which is great. I hope that you guys have a uh, straw with some kind of cup that's a little under halfway full of water. All right. And let's talk about this exercise. This is going to change your life if you don't know about this. <clears throat> this is awesome. Awesome stuff. So, what it's called is semi-occluded vocal tract exercise. Semi-occluded vocal tract exercise. But you can call it the straw method if you want, which is much easier. This is used by speech therapists, by vocal coaches, vocal teachers. This is used across several industries because it is so useful for reducing tension in the voice. Now, uh, let's talk about the physics just a little bit. When you sing through a straw, this is providing a little bit of a little bit more restriction and it's actually creating less restriction on your vocal cords because there's more pressure above the cords and it's balancing out with the pressure below the cords. All right. You didn't need to know that, right? But now you do. So now you know it anyways. So with this, what we're gonna do first is breathe air into it and then put some pitch and then air and then pitch, okay? It's gonna sound like this. All 
All right, so I did just air and then I added pitch and then I went back to air and pitch, all right? Let's try that together. And you can do this at your own pace. Just give it a shot. You don't have to do it with me, but just give it a shot. So by the way, when I say pitch, I mean sing, you're singing into the straw. Okay, so it's gonna be just air and then that pitch. Here we go. I'm just realizing if, if someone tunes in at that moment, it's like the weirdest YouTube video ever, but that's okay. It's all about vocal technique. So hopefully, I mean, that should feel relaxed. That should feel really good because it's taking pressure. It's taking pressure off of here, right? And it's balancing the pressure on both sides of the chords. Wonderful. Also, the other point behind that is that it's making sure your vocal cords are efficient when they're when they're engaging. So it's off and on, off and on. They're, they're efficient and the pressure is nice and balanced, okay? So it's, it's really healthy for your voice. Why do speech therapists use this? Or why do uh, speech folks use this? Because if you lose your voice, this can be a way to recover. If you're having some of the singers at my school, there's a couple that actually had damaged their voice um, it's, it's really sad because they sing too much, right? They sing too much all the time, but they do a lot of this to recover. It feels really good and it's really healthy for your voice. All right. It's an exercise for reducing tension. Another thing you can do with this is simply sing and just go up and down, right? Slide up and down like this. Okay, let's try that. Go ahead and try that now, all right? So you're sliding around with pitch. All right? Yeah, feels good, right? Feels nice and relaxed, really healthy. And another thing you can do is notice, notice the bubbles in the water, all right? If you're having issues with vocalization and having consistent sound in your voice, if it's going like sound and then it shuts off and then it goes back to sound, well, the bubbles are going to tell you about your air support. If the bubbles are nice and consistent, then your air is coming out nice and consistent. If the bubbles go like on and off and stuff, then your air is going on and off and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So this tells you what's happening with your air support as well. So let's try to sing uh, a little bit of a song. Let's do, I love to do Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, all right? And let's go ahead and sing it. You can do it in your own range or you can do it with me. And we're just going to sing the first phrase and try to sustain it with, with the bubbles, okay? Mm, we'll start there. Ready? And... Nice thing, practicing in the mirror is great, but I can actually see myself in the in the camera right here, and the bubbles are pretty consistent, so I'm super happy with that. Um, yeah, it's just really healthy. It's a really good thing to do. Let's do some Amazing Grace. Once again, this is probably the weirdest uh, video out there right now if someone just tunes in at a moment's notice. Mm -hmm. Ready and go. <gasps> breath. Awesome. Feels so good. So good for your voice. And you got a nice water supply with you as well, which is great. So I first learned about this from the Berkshire Choral Festival. There was a conductor there. Her name was Erin Freeman. And it's probably like 
230 singers that week, right? Huge choirs, huge choirs. And she bought hundreds of straws and she gave out straws to the entire choir. And she said, if you're having any issues with your voice, go back to the straw, all right? Because it's so healthy for you. All right, great. So I, I hope you learned a lot. Um, we talked about posture. We also talked about, um, what did we talk about next? Oh, breath support, yeah. One way to find your mus muscles for breath support, just to remind you, is I can feel those lower muscles, those air support muscles when I'm doing that. And then I could pop on my straw and go and see how long I can go. All right, it's using those, those breath support muscles, crucial. And we also talked about the vocal cords, how they work, and how this exercise, well, this exercise, can reduce tension while you are singing. All right, so um, I'm gonna be giving away a $97 prize, which I'm gonna explain in a second. But looking at the chat room, thank you for all of your numbers, the closest person is, just wanna make sure I get all the numbers, scrolling up a little bit, yep, okay. All right, G. Mary, you have won. The number was 85, and you said 77. So make sure you reach out to me. Um, you can email me, G. Mary. You're probably on the uh, email list, but uh, email me at mike at musicministry101.com, and I will set you up with the following. All right, so I hope that you guys are realizing um, oh, there's a question actually from Barbara. Did anyone have trouble doing this? I purposely over tightened my vocal fo folds and I was still bubbling smoothly. Great uh, comment there. So Barbara, it's hard to actually physically tighten these muscles here. I mean, try to tighten your neck uh, like that. Uh, that's why the closest, the closest we can get. Um, so hard to explain, but you can't really um, consciously tighten all of those at the same time. So I don't think you were actually tightening the muscles that would have closed off the air. That's why the air kept going inside. So you don't, you don't want to be adding tension um, at all. Okay. So never add, um, add tension to what you're doing. Point is to try to reduce, reduce tension. All right, so um, go back to here. All right, so Music Ministry 101, yeah, it's about finding your best voice, right, so that you can be a leader um, in your church. And we talked about how your voice is a combination of the voice sound, the resonance, the articulation, and minus the tensions. All we, we're always trying to remove tension as singers. So what I've done is... I've put together a program, which you might find very interesting, and several people actually in here are members of that program. So do you want your best voice without paying $60 an hour for one-on-one -on -one lessons, which is unachievable for, for plenty of people, or without paying hundreds or thousands to attend a conference? I love conferences, but they cost a lot of money, especially when you're paying for hotels. Imagine that you could get your best voice even without knowing anything about singing. Well, I've created a program for people like you. It's called Advanced Vocal Technique, and it's for beginner and intermediate church singers. It's a complete system. I'm gonna, this is a video, I'm gonna press play for you so you can see what it looks like on the inside. It's a complete system where we go through each of the areas of the voice that we talked about tonight, and we go into super detail so each one of these is a separate video, and there are a bunch of videos. Thanks, Margie. I see your comment there. So mastering resonance, mastering English diction. Uh, by the way, that's the articulators. There's a couple bonuses. There's mastering breath support. We go through each of the areas we talked about in great detail. Now, they're all video trainings, and some I've created with slides like this. In this one, I was teaching IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet. If you do that five times, you're going to feel different. <laughs> and in this one, this is a, these are live videos, like where I was 
right in front of the camera and I'm guiding you through what to do to improve your vocal technique. It's, it's a compression of all of the stuff that I learned over the past 10 years so that you can have access to it for a lot cheaper than the education that I'm paying for. Um, so I break down every essential element of the voice and we master it step by step. It's designed to give you instant results, but you have to work at your own pace. So you want to master things before moving on too far in the program. Don't just skim over everything, but actually try the exercises. All right, so this is all online and you would get access for ever, right? For your life. Now, let me show you what some other people are saying. Many people are already developing their best voice with my new system. Melissa said, I can definitely do the first line in one breath now. We were working on breath support at the time. Kathy said, I can't believe how much confidence this program has given me. That's a side benefit. Nadine, who is here, said this program has been wonderful for me. And Kirsten said, Kirsten was working on a hissing exercise and she made like a 60%, a really huge, significant improvement. And I know that that hissing exercise is going to lead right into her actual vocal technique. Jessica said, I've had four years of professional voice training and I learned new things in this course. So I want to show you what the, what it looks like. So we're going to go to this page together. I'll just show you www.musicministry101.com slash confident voice. Again, that confidence is a side effect, a side benefit of knowing what you're doing. All right, so let's go to the computer. And hopefully you can see that. And I'm going to go to the site, www.musicministry101.com slash confident voice. All right, so here's what it looks like. Oh, don't need to see here that guy. Here to introduce. Oh, that guy's right here. Okay. All right, so I changed the price, by the way, two days ago from 147 to 97. And the reason is I want to just give a lot of people access to this. So there's also a payment plan where you can pay $20 a month for six months. So it's a little bit more, but it's more manageable. And the promise here is that I'm going to help you find your best voice whether you're singing in a choir or you're singing in as a cantor. It's voice instruction for church singers at a fraction of the cost. These are some of the areas that we talk about, all right? There's some quick start videos. By the way, we did a little bit of the quick start today. How your voice works, we did some of that today. Uh, we talk about mastering breath support, right? Never feel out of breath with inhalation by relaxation. The, crucial technique right there where you just relax the stomach muscles and let air flow in but it builds upon the previous exercises increasing resonance we talked a little bit about lifting the soft palate mastering english diction we didn't talk about this at all tonight but this is a huge area of singing getting all those vowels clear and consonants clear this by the way is a college course in and of itself I, I took this in college and I put what I learned there, English diction, into this. And there's a couple of bonus videos as well. So you could be paying for vocal lessons, voice lessons, for about $60 an hour. And if you have the money, I would highly recommend voice lessons. But if you'd rather try to learn the best techniques from my program, which they're all in there, then you can buy it now for $97, and it's a complete end-to-end -end system. It's a wonderful package. So go to www.musicministry101.com slash confident voice, and you can join me in this program tonight. Just click on the buy now. I just want to show you how this works so you don't get confused. Um, you can put in your email address. I'll use an old one, yahoo.com. Click next, and this is where you can pay with either PayPal or a credit card. So either way is fine. It's hours of vo voice training. It's step-by-step -step, step exercises. There's bonus videos, and it's what I learned from so many vocal teachers and vocal coaches that I'm just proud to share this with you because people that take it do get a lot out of it. By the way, let's go back to here. If you don't get a lot out of it. Hi, this is Mike from Music Ministry 101. I am confident in the program, so you can return it 
within the first 30 days with no questions asked. Honestly, only one person has returned it, and here's the reason why. She actually won, she won this, this program and forgot that she won it, so she actually went and bought it. You know what I'm saying? Like she won it, but then she forgot she won it, so she actually went and bought it. I thought that was so cute. So I re refunded her, but she was the only, only person that's ever requested a refund. So it's a really wonderful program. I put my heart and soul into it, and I think you will find it super helpful in finding your best voice. By the way, I'm always here to help you. Um, let me go back to here. So I'm always here to help you. So if you have any questions and I can help you, please uh, let me know. I'm available um, to discuss with you. So let me just take a quick look at the chat here. Um, Sandy says, yes, it is university voice lessons. Thanks, Mike. Excellent course. I love how detailed you are. Thank you, Sandy. Yeah, it's, it was great to put together. I put a lot of time into it, and uh, I think people will find it very helpful. So um, Nadine said, I love that you can always go back to the lessons. Yeah, it's available all the time. You get your own password. You create your own password, and then you can just log in. Um, I've bought programs like this before. This, to me, is my favorite one. <laughs> I haven't bought voice ones, but in other areas. And I know how to put these things together. So I break apart the voice into those steps we talked about, and it's all organized there for you. So um, thank you for joining me tonight. It was really nice to have a group of you. We had between like 30 and 40 people the whole time. Uh, please go to www.musicministry101.com slash confident voice. And Jack says, plus your review, your voice technique, and offer advice. Yeah, so actually Jack and a few other folks that are here are in a private coaching group. And that's on Facebook. We can talk about that as well. Please email me. That's currently um, currently not open, but I would let a couple more people into it. Um, just email me at mike at musicministry101.com. It's a nice little community of us. Okay, that's all for tonight. Just under an hour, which I think is a great amount of time. I hope you are all safe and well. And once again, final time, please go to www.musicministry101.com slash confident voice. It will actually make you happy, I believe, because you'll be working on improving your voice and getting better results with your voice. So when we return to choir or return to cantering, you'll have more confidence and you'll be able to go in there, shine your light so that others may praise God. Remember that scripture quote? Yeah, shine like, it was something like shine your light so that others may Praise God, okay? All right, that's what we're trying to do, and I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful night. Thanks for coming to the workshop. Peace out.